So here in 1995, we're going to take a look at the second turn. And we'll move along a little quicker. I mean, I buffered everything away as, as we went forward in that first turn. Some of it is the struggle of getting used to what is not a common type of system. Yes, there are precedents, but... Um, so reinforcement and recovery, though, this is new for us. We're going to be taking a look at uh, first the NATO reinforcements. There's guaranteed to be one on turn two. And we roll a die and see what we get. We get the French. It's going to give me a couple more planes and some forces, including an airborne. Uh, one of the better things. Um, then the Russians, the three, well, the Serbs, the three VO, which God knows why. <laughs> it's such quality. On a one that comes in, does not. And now we worry about the recovery rolls. Now the NATO forces are, uh, let's see where they go. They go somewhere. Um, Trieste, Rijeka, Zadar, and Drubrovnik. Okay. I don't really want to slip down back here. I believe I'm allowed to supply off the Adriatic. Um, but leaving something back there, it, it has advantages, it has disadvantages. Uh, huh. Maybe I do want to slip in back there because something from back here could slide up behind there. And it's just these ports. I certainly don't want more than one unit going in there. I could stack another unit into Trieste, but there's no point in that. That means I'd have to double up somewhere. Let me let me think about that supply situation. There's too much risk because I'll have to maintain a line back to here. And if I don't stack, it means basically the one unit is all, all that's going to be there. Um, I think Zadar is not in terrible risk, but I will put the additional unit up here at Rijeka because the line feels weaker back there. In fact, I'm going to put the better unit up there. All right. And I had to hunt down the line of communication rolls to see about that because, again, supply in this is a little funky. Uh, but remember, if something can't trace a line of communication, it faces the attrition aspect which isn't spelled out here as far as I recall. Uh, units only need to check, oh no, during cleanup to avoid attrition, yeah, okay. Uh, I only read half of that. All right, now we do recovery rolls. And we look at the recovery table, see 5.31 below, which is this. I don't know if that needs a table that isn't a table anywhere. It's just two lines. Um, and what are we doing? Equal to or more than the nationality's number. All right, so the NATOs need a seven. Since they're both the same, we'll roll them. One of them recovers. I think, yeah, one is a surrender, which gives a victory point. So that just sits out there. And the Serbian needs a six, and they'll recover. Now, the actual reinforcements come in for NATO. This is Croatian, which is Rijeka, Zadar, Zagreb, or Usijek. Hmm. Where's Zagreb? I don't know where Usijek is. I may have passed that up. And we don't want to overstack, remember. So we'll put this up here. And again, I think no, that's part of Bosnia. And for the Serbs, I 
It's any cities inside Serbia and 2509 Banja Luka. Which is not that. It appears to be in 2409 instead. Uh, I see no reason not to move as far forward as possible. There is some possible advantage to getting more forces here, but I kind of want to punch there, I guess. I don't know. All right, so that's the reinforcements initiative. This is a simple NATO. Okay, so the Serbs get the initiative, which we were using that for. And air commitment. Now start, all the air units get pulled off the map and starting with the Serbs, we can start one at a time placing planes. So kind of a hard decision point here. Um, Serbs had to go first. They dropped a patrol plane out there. Hey, you know, defend against whatever's coming. Well, if that's gonna be there, NATO dropped a fighter into the um, uh, suppression roll, which has a good chance of taking it out. That means, hey, I'm kind of in danger. My patrols might not work, right? So I start putting ground support planes into play. Now, there's some possibility of that being an issue too, uh, but that felt like the safer thing, save my fighters to see how NATO goes, but NATO followed suit, dropped a couple into ground support. Again, so strategic bombing is just an attempt to give victory points. It feels to me like what you want to do is you want to degrade the other person's military situation at this point in the game more than you want to worry about trying to catch an extra victory point. Maybe later in the game the victory points will mean more. Um, but now I'm back on NATO after having played out these things and I've got a couple more bombers and I gotta think I could do like airstrikes on Belgrade or something and maybe get my airdrop in there and win the game for free if I route that unit. You only route a unit on a one or a two but it's uh, something of a oh look I win <laughs> type of situation. It would force um, the Serbian player to really scramble to get that back if I did that. Now the alternative is to probably just, again, strategic bombing is probably not worth it, to just pump points into ground support. But here's the thing. I have to be able to get to Belgrade for that to work, and they outfighter me. So I'm going to just keep going with ground support. I think it's the safer option. Although it is conceivable I could do the airstrikes and planes could end up in the ground support box for their second activity or whatever. And I've got plenty of planes in there. Ugh, it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's a hard call. Um, over here, there's still no reason to put anything onto an interdiction mission because or a suppression mission because there's nothing to suppress. Interdiction, so far I haven't been seeing victory points being spent on units, so I'll drop another plane in patrol. Well, if there's two planes in patrol, we gotta get rid of those, right? Put a third plane in patrol and escort. Well, we got to get rid of three of them now. I've used up all the fighters, so no reason not to do this. Suppression only works against fighters, so there's absolutely no reason for me to put fighters into the suppression box. For this, do I want to slip an airstrike in? You know, I'd kind of like to, but that'll end up in patrol immediately. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I can't knock out all his patrols. So I'll drop this back into air support. And now that I'm absolutely safe, 
Well, there's no place else to put it other than patrol anyway, because suppression won't do me any good whatsoever. All I'd be doing is rolling for recharges. So then we go and look at suppression. And we have three fighters on suppression. They attempt an EC for each case. One, two, three. None of those succeeded. That's kind of a pity. <laughs> but now I check on call status and I might have those planes for patrol at least. One, two, three. I get two of them in my patrol box, but one is spent. Uh, there were no other, no other strategic bombing actions. So now we go to the action phase. And, well, <laughs> as usual, it's break time, man. Oh, did we? No, we didn't have any deaths. Herbs with their initiative have set up a number before from last turn. They set up a number of their initiatives this turn, a number of attacks that are uh, appealing to me, let's just say. Um, for example, I could launch an attack over here in the corner, and this looks rather promising. I've got a possible little flank, or I have a flanking attack here with support that looks appealing. A number of different places, those are the primary ones where I might want to launch an attack. But here's the problem. All the air power is available now. There are uh, a couple of uh, NATO planes here and a significant amount of NATO bombers. They actually outnumber the bombers available uh, for, for, for the fight. And the attacker has to go first which means, in terms of uh, deploying their escorts and, and support, this is something that happens in these Pulse games. Uh, now, the way the strike games handle this, and again, I, I view that as sort of the most similar in terms of uh, the type of operations that are taking place here is that you would generally fly a bunch of air missions to knock out the other guy's airplanes. That was only available to me in the strategic bombing suppression segment to knock out their fighters. I've got no way to bomb the air bases, some of which might be carrier based, etc., uh, and many of which are probably out of range, um, but I've got no way to exert my influence against uh, any of the planes that are possibly there for defense uh, at this point. The only thing I can do is this sort of how much do I want to commit and more could be committed in defense. Because there's no, because everything can reach everywhere. Um, that sort of, again, like the, hey, this is all probably within one strategic hex, or maybe two, within the, uh, the strike games. Uh, it's approximating the same kind of circumstance, except the bases are all far, far away and can't be intervened with. And that's the kind of situation you really have in, in, in this circumstance. Um, some of which may be politically based, you know, the hey, we're not allowed to hit the Russian <laughs> air bases or whatever. Uh, would that be the case? I'm not sure. But that would be the kind of argument that you would make, is that uh, maybe there's a flyover through Romania or something like that being allowed. Um, I don't know what else would allow it. <laughs> I'm not sure Romania would. Um, It does put things in a locked in kind of painful situation. So in the strike games, you wouldn't be able to intercept uh, an air mission from that far away. 
you would be able to probably provide ground support to one, but you wouldn't be able to do the fighter versus fighter activity. Uh, you'd need your fighters closer into the combat itself in order for them to operate. And if any of these bombers are uh, shorter range things like A-10s or whatever, they're probably deployed in airfields that are reachable and suppressible. And that's something I don't really have the capability to do in this game. So it's opened up a situation that feels a little different than it would in the more detailed game, and also that creates a hard to game circumstance, which is, hey, you wanna make your attack, fine, but your first one or two or whatever, you, you, you either have to deploy a lot of your power in order to ensure that they work, and then you may or may not have any power left, or <laughs> you deploy a little bit of power and you might get overwhelmed by uh, the enemy force. Now, the advantage is the number of ground support planes kind of doesn't matter. It's only the amount that make it, it's only that one makes it through. It's the best one. However, when we look at the uh, air combat, Quantities of ground support can matter in the sense that if, uh, if I send too little fighter support, my ground support planes can absorb some of what the fighters are going to throw in. I'm struggling with this because, you know, again, it's like, Maybe all the air suppression activity or whatever is somehow being abstracted by that, but it's got a different feel to it and one that doesn't really align as well as, hey, the fighters have to be deployed within a radius that they can scramble and get up there uh, and respond in time. And the concept of like escorts operating also as cap uh, or as some sort of interception capability. Uh, I mean, sure, there could be an air-to-air -air combat under those circumstances, but that's not uh, the way the doctrines are set up, right? <laughs> what I chose to do is to launch uh, a set-piece battle from here and throw these planes up. Two fighters, one ground support. My main hope being I've got so many advantages now, then the question is, hey, do I want to face that? You know, do I want to use up my firepower on that? Or do I want to let that hex, which is a city hex, it's worth a victory point, um, fall, which it is likely to do anyway, uh, at the cost of probably at least two of those three planes uh, getting knocked into the spent box. Or... Do I want to put some of my own, and I'd kind of have to fly both my F4s, which are 50-50 chance of getting another mission uh, to fight these. And then I might as well throw some ground support and just try to stymie the whole thing. You don't know. <laughs> Odd I defend. I choose to let this go through. There was like an 11 point or a 10 point swing between the two nation, between the two die rolls. Massive differential there in addition to what the Serbs had to their advantage. I don't have a decent amount of movement points to advance with, um, but I did want to take the city, which got me a victory point, killed off one of the Croat units, and the air power situation looks a lot closer now. Um, I ended up spending both the fighter planes. The bomber got through the SAM fire. Mm, I think there's SAMs on seas still. And, uh, and is available again. So there's a little bit more fighter cover for the Serbs and a little bit more bomber capability for NATO and probably close to a crapshoot. But it's still the case that like, I spent two fighters 
that are gone now that didn't do a damn thing except prevent these fighters from going up. Now that can happen in the strike games too. Again, it's got that same kind of game of chicken type thing. Something feels a little different here. That level of detail captures more of the reality, but a lot is very similar. And I think the abstraction kind of holds up. <laughs> Uh, it's the game of chicken type situation in the sense that quite often, especially with AWACS or whatever, you can scramble a bunch of fighters uh, to defend a certain area. And it's this mind-numbing, paralyzing decision in that game, uh, in those games. And it kind of comes close to that in this of... Well, hell, even if I got more fighters, do I send them there? Because whatever I send, it expends one of its usages. <laughs> and here, you don't know whether or not you're expending it, but you got to make guesses there. Anyway, that turns the initiative over to NATO. I'll, I'll try, you know, it's just these kind of interactive mechanisms are very, very hard. Um, for me to, to wrap my head around enough to be able to feel like I'm doing it right. I always feel like, not, not so much just the rules, which I probably screw up as well, but um, in terms of, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, you know? <laughs> and honestly, it's kind of like the question of, well, should I be using my artillery in OCS or whatever? Because you have such a limited amount of it that it's, and it's so expensive in terms of supply that you're really, really uh, throwing what seems like potentially very good operations into question, uh, unless you have, you know, a huge supply advantage over your opponent. Uh, but here, yeah, unless you have ridiculously high air power differences, you can't kind of assure yourself that you're going to be able to make it through your turn. Oh, because of the reinforcements, I have no choice. I have to move either one of these or one of these units, which probably means not much good is going to come out of my first initiatives. Another uh, Serbian success, but again at high air costs, and again NATO didn't intervene. Um, another unit moves forward, and then I notice, oh hey, I didn't flip, unflip this guy. This is one of the risks. Oh no, this may be the unit that I moved before. Okay, we'll leave him alone. He filled the gap, he's fine. But yeah, this is one of the dangers is, did I unflip it or not, <laughs> you know? Uh, you could have the same thing in GBOH, but again, formations move at a time in that. Here it's each unit and there's sort of this tight packed geometric uh, situation, which you would not see in most of the other games that use this kind of uh, mechanism. Korean War, I mean, you do eventually see a, a, a fairly dense line and the game gets kind of boring at that point. Um, I'm thinking the Lee versus Grant, the uh, great campaigns of the American Civil War. Uh, for those, you've got kind of loose, uh, you've got kind of group formations that are operating together. And it's pretty obvious. It's not like a lone unit trying to fill a hex on the line. And in fact, in Korean War, you're not going with solid hex uh, defense the way that you have here either. You're generally little clusters along the main supply lines because nothing else matters. But here, everything's so condensed and there are no main supply lines. <laughs> Serbs nearly out of air power and at a weaker position than NATO. It makes attacks that I was kind of considering, like I could move here and here. Of course, I'd lose my line of communication doing that. Um, to do a flanking attack on this US unit, which might be very valuable, or it might be very risky. But now it's pretty much ruled out. <laughs> um, I 
can't play for that kind of risk because anything that important, NATO out airs me. They have more fighters than I do. So no matter what I commit, I can't guarantee it. So now I'm looking up here maybe, which seems like, you know, the obvious uh, continuation, just inching my way forward. I'm ahead in victory points. I can afford this kind of slow movement, perhaps. Well, the danger of that... Oh, these are like anti-armor, and I don't remember what that means. Um, the danger of that, though, is uh, I could go without any air support, in which case, oh, look, I just fly a powerful ground support unit in and actually I think the D doesn't even get a SAM well no the D D is not my problem I'm looking at a B so yeah I don't have to worry about SAMs there but a massive swing could be done at little at no cost if I play no air in there and that's kind of the iffy thing let me see what that parentheses means I forgot how that works um I'm not even sure where to look. You would think here, but it's not. <laughs> uh, I don't remember where the meaning of that parenthesized strength is um, dealt with. That's some kind of anti-tank capability, but I don't remember you know, is that a loss ratio effect? Uh, is that something else? Just an automatic CSA advantage? I don't see one listed here or up here. And this is kind of one of the problems I have with these rules is I'm flipping back and forth they tend to be sparse, save paper and all, but they tend to be hard to find what the piece of information I need is. And in this particular case, the piece of information I need should be up here, or at least referenced here. And there's no mention of parenthesized strength there. There's no mention well, certainly an air mobile there wouldn't be. Um, it's not going to be here in the acronyms. I don't know where I'd find it. So I'm going to have to start flipping through the rules, something I hate to do, to try to find a rule I vaguely remember and I know has an effect. And obviously, you know, you wouldn't have that parenthesized strength if it didn't have some effect. Um, to see what the hell it means. It's under UQR, which is actually what is parenthesized, or as they say, bracketed. Um, a unit with bracketed UQR improves its quality level by one when in combat against armor. It's mentioned in one place. Um, and I'm lucky I remember it, but obviously there's some effect to that, right? <laughs> you gotta look it up. Now I will remember better, now that I had, I'm um, forced to look it up, but yeah. And that's not gonna help me here anyway, so I probably should have just ignored it. Resolving that, I discovered I had forgotten to draw the chits again. <laughs> You're doing so much fiddling with the numbers and everything, it's very easy to forget the step that adds perhaps the most variance to the entire battle. And one that, you know, is just to me more die roll. It really is. Um, it, it, it just does not seem worth the, the added cost to it. Just give the units more variability. Uh, make the letter variability a little bit higher or give it a fixed value or something. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, and that ended up going from just flipping over the D unit to, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> because it got a shitty number and this got like a seven on the B. When the A is a five, I mean, these chits are, 
you don't know which side they're going to come off <laughs> in terms of like the quality of the unit does not guarantee you get the best result on the chit, like the higher quality, a quality unit. Now, I'm not sure why that would be the case. Um, just to kind of annoy my OCD or something. Uh, and now I'm on a NATO action and I, you know, I'm looking at, well, I actually have an attack here with double flanking units. Wow. I have a unit here that would be flanking that's higher quality, but I'm in the mountain in a city which means multiple things, and I have to keep track of both factors here. So maybe plus two in combat, and plus one to the loss ratio there, and plus one in combat. But maybe I'm wrong, because sometimes these are not right. Yeah, they, that looks correct. Um, so yeah, for a set piece battle, I'd be looking at two to one losses. If I end up winning, I might not get a great result out of it. And if I don't end up, well, and my modifier, which makes it more likely that I win, is hurt by three levels on here. So I'm looking at, and, and, and this is the kind of calculation you make, I'm looking at an A versus a B. That would give me one. I'm looking at, one, two, three additional units. One, two, three. But one of theirs. I'm looking at the mountain and city. I'm looking at flanking, which would be three in that direction. One, two, three. But here's where things get weird. If instead of the A, I go back to then, and, and use the C to attack instead, instead of going up three for flanking, I go up six, which would give me one, two, three. So I have a better attack from here. And then I look and the terrain's fine, is the same there. And I kind of want to do this, um, except there's still a Serbian patrol plane left. So, if I don't launch the attack yet, maybe I go do something else. Maybe they use up that plane. Ah. <laughs> this is, when I have to balance this many things, it's very difficult for me. Um, it's very difficult for me to see, well, will I win the fight or not? Am I likely to win the fight or not? It all depends on what the random draws are, because first of all, unlike what I can calculate out and, and think of in my head, I still don't have a really good idea of how much better a B is than a C, or an A than a B, or whatever. Those numbers are not well defined, and they're randomized. Unlike the dice, where I kind of know where the randomization is going to hit, what I don't have is a clear view of what the randomization is on these. And that's especially obscured from me by the fact that I draw chits and I see, oh look, it's better at B than it is at A or whatever. And I'm just left with, eh, <laughs> what? <laughs> What's my expected advantage? I don't know, I assume there's one, but it may be very, very small. And, you know, remember that's in addition to the one I already, or, or the one that I already put in here. But like, I don't know if the distance between C and B is the same as the distance between A and B. And that's troublesome. Um, so yeah, I just don't know. And I'd love to get rid of that plane. So let me look for somewhere else to do something uh, with NATO because I'm in no great rush to get through here. It's not like that's going to start causing a, a collapse over here There would have been some possibility if I could have cut things there But I couldn't I didn't see a good attack for that. So I nibbled at the edges. Well nibbling at the edges is like um, Actually capturing the pieces in a go game It may not be the thing you want to do 
one, it, it may be better to leave them out there dead, although they provide some potential advantage to the opponent, rather than take them, because by taking them, you hand the initiative off to the enemy. Well, here, that nibbling at the edges cost me a lot of air points. But what else was I going to do? <laughs> you know, if I don't want to make these other attacks unless things get loosened, well, I probably don't want to just flip pieces or something. I don't know. First turn, I had lots and lots of pieces that, yeah, I can just push them, you know, up to the front or whatever. That's no longer the case, which is why I'm saying I don't want to just flip pieces. There's, there's sort of a, well, something good might come as the turn develops. Maybe I end up at least not looking at the barrel of three uh, ground support planes uh, facing me. You know, maybe, but likewise the other direction. I'm not looking down the barrel of those planes and seeing that, well, you know, so, so both players have kind of an incentive to do nothing. And this kind of happens in Korean War as well, uh, where a bunch of, where you look and you say, well, I've got no chance of breaking through in this area. And maybe you, you know, you look at whatever and you just decide, fine, I'll expend a unit there. And that's a pass for that, you know, or I could just pass. <laughs> But just passing allows me to hand off a situation. So let's say NATO just passes here. That means I'm handing a situation where Serbia could choose, well, you know, I'm kind of winning the game. I am winning the game. And, oh, did I screw this up and move this? No, I've moved forward too. I'm fine. Uh, and, and just make a, a decision of, well, there goes that turn. I don't know which way that goes. I really don't. Because while there are a fair number of NATO reinforcements, and some of them are planes still, uh, there's at least as many Serbian reinforcements. So I think I kind of don't really feel like either side has an advantage in terms of what's incoming. And the board looks fucking static as hell right now. You know, like, maybe this was pretty good, being able to nibble those pieces off. Um, certainly the NATO forces are really outclassed by the Serbs across the board. Um, you know, just because there's a fair number of really, you know, like the Croats that are not really that combat ready. I came up to check, oh, I got tea going, um, after burning a unit over here, uh, whether or not I'm right that, that you could just pass and get back in. I'm pretty sure in Korean War you can't. You, you roll and you get a certain number of activations and you have to take them. And if you don't take them, you are done for the turn. So that might be mirrored here. But while I thought about that, because I've been operating on this, I realized, oh shit, I forgot something. There is a minus one die roll modifier on effectiveness checks for the initiative player. And I have not been taking those into account. I may have on the first turn, but I haven't been today. Like I may have early in the first turn, but I haven't today. Part of much of the first turn video is today. Um, I don't know how much of a big deal that is, but it does mean that like the fighter checks, which were effectiveness checks, as opposed to the only other thing, well, suppression was effectiveness checks. Um, I'm not sure that recall is an effectiveness check, even though you're checking against effectiveness. Um, I would have to find that, which is somewhere. <laughs> like everything, it's somewhere in these roles. Uh, it's not recovery. I get the feeling it's called recall. I don't remember. Um, and now I scan through this and I'm just not finding it. Uh, on call maybe, yeah, on call. It is an effectiveness check. 
So the initiative player has basically this huge bonus. Something that's just a die roll comparison. The Serbs have the edge in it. But again, very, very random. Who gets it? Uh, but yeah, I don't recall about that other aspect, which I may be fucking up too. So here in initiative, it doesn't talk about passing one way or the other. Uh, in action phase, it says continue until both sides pass. But it doesn't specify whether you get to pass again if you get in. Um, I'm not sure that there sort of is an activation described more clearly than that. Action phase. Okay, I gotta go. So here we go. If a player chooses to pass, then they may not activate any more units that turn, and the other player can continue with everything that it finishes. This is, yeah. <laughs> and I kind of screwed that up in the f end of the first turn. NATO delayed uh, moving a couple of units. I don't think it had any effect. Um, but what it means is the guy with the light less units will not be able to do sort of the surprise airdrop. Whoever has the most units on the board is going to be able to do that. Uh, I don't know if that's an intended effect, but there are things you can do at the end of the game at the end of a game turn with an airdrop that look like they could be very, very potent. That will only be available to whoever has the most crap in the front line. Uh, it's not like some kind of cool opportunity that you're like, you know, arranging to have happen by being able to pass on your own. Instead, it's just, I got more meat in the front line, therefore I can maybe do, maybe cut off uh, supplies or whatever with an airdrop. Now, um, how important is that? Yeah, that's a big deal because you can airdrop in an enemy zone of control. So you could you could drop in a place that cuts off the enemy's line of communication and that extends your own or extends your own set of hexes. And, you know, so here's an example. Um, let's say the Serbs were one hex further here. Well, that won't work. No, the way the Serbs are right here. If the Serbs could drop their airborne, one of their airborne units here, that cuts all of this off. Now, are they able to do that anyway? Yes, but it's not that important right now. If they did it right now, this unit would be in severe danger. The unit that just dropped there. It would be in a bad place. And the only reason that they're able to get an advantage is because they get to do it after all NATO, if they do it after all NATO units have actually gone. Yeah, that's to me a little troubling to tell you the truth. Anyway, it's break time again. <laughs> I'm having real trouble facing up to this. And part of it is quite simply the rules are not um, are not gelling in my head. Uh, you know, and I, 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 it's hard for me to tell you why. Um, some of it's that I'm stupid. Some of it's that they're written very sparsely. Some of it may be something that's kind of the hey, this is just not the kind of game that I'm really, really excited about. <laughs> and I tend to screw shit up uh, in that kind of situation, more likely. You know, I'm, I'm less... When you're less interested in something, you have a harder time um, sort of hooking into it. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything that I was just dying uh, to try. Th this intrigues me. And seeing where it comes from is also intriguing. But other than uh, Korean War and Lee versus Grant, 
that side of things, uh, when you go more to that, uh, the Gulf Strike and, and Aegean Strike flavor of game and the fleet flavor of game, I find myself not really enjoying the kind of thinking and the kind of games that you're playing with the air power. And this tones them down or changes them. I'm not sure. The Serbs found one more place where they could attack. We launched, that looked pretty good, and we launched our air power. Uh, only one fighter left. We were, I guess, beaten in the air combat in the sense that although the um, um, although NATO took a hit as well. We just took ours as a spent hit. The uh, NATO actually took two hits. I'm not sure how that happened. That is not possible. Uh, I guess I guess it was just one against this thing, but I think I think that's wrong. Um, I'm gonna flip this back over. Although I thought there was a damaged air unit, so I'll leave this as is. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the... Why would it be two? I don't know. Um, the remaining plane got to try to shoot down the one bomber that was sent, and it failed on two shots. Uh, so everything kind of worked out. This is where we are in odds, which is plus 10 for the Serbs there. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just one. Unless it was there already. Um, and the multiplier here is going to be just times one because I'm going this way. It's not a great attack in the sense that it's not going to allow me well, it's probably not going to allow me to advance that'll allow me to cut things off. It might. I don't have to declare the advance, the units that are advancing, until I get the die roll. And that could be not of any importance. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we get like 18 to 5. So we cause 13 hits to this. That's going to kill this thing off as well. And now we roll for our advance because we're using, if I can find that roll, I find myself flipping through constantly. Mainly because everything, almost everything in the rolls is important, uh, which is why I'm saying, well, there's a, there's a player aid would be very hard to express all these different steps. It's almost like the rules are a procedural system that's so different from anything that I've faced. Um, so this is a PA, so I roll the die and have the result rounding down. Okay, so I get one extra move. Now I'm assuming I'm allowed to advance and then move into the back into the space that I came from, but I would be stopped here no matter what. So even if these guys advanced, something horrible would happen. And I think I flipped him, seeing as he looks flipped now. Uh, and that'll move operations back over. We've got room to try to sneak out. <clears throat> and I think we're going to have to start doing that because I'm kind of running out of pieces to uh, to strengthen the line with. And NATO is getting its ass handed to them with these Croatian and Slovenian pieces. After I pull a piece out, and again, the fact that it's one piece at a time instead of you have to... The, the Korean War is, hey, you have to move this many units, uh, sometimes which can be zero based on just a die roll. Um, feels like it generates a little bit more uh, variability in terms of the maneuvering aspect of the game. I kind of like, I, well, I definitely like that about Korean War, and I feel like 
I'm missing something here where each play has a response, sort of. Um, so now I'm in a position where I could launch a moving attack here, and maybe that's worth it. I've got support here. Serbs count for support. I could have pulled this up and gotten a free support out of that as well. Uh, I do get the flanking attack there, but the problem is these grounds support the fighter to cover it. I have no fighter power, so I feel like my capability to continue pressing an attack has kind of been diminished greatly. <laughs> now, if the fighter goes away, then I can throw my bombers in. Ooh, you know what I forgot though? I forgot to roll uh, Sam rolls. Again, so many different pieces to this. So it was just a C against them. Oops. All right, that was a successful Sam against that thing. And I don't remember what the effects of that are. I have to look that up. But I also have a Sam roll at an A, which I think gives a plus one against one of those, which is a successful Sam against one of these. Uh, I think I didn't get them all deleted. I don't know. Again, once you forget something, it's very easy to fuck up because I think these were fours. Actually, it may have been a five. I, I actually think it was a five. Okay. Um, I still don't know if that was correct. Uh, so what does the SAM roll do? Well, we looked this up. The air unit is damaged and placed in the spent air box. Okay, so in these cases, I think this is what we're looking at. I still don't know about that. I feel like something See, uh, I'm getting confused between the first and second turn here, and it, it's just, it, the combat system is so complex, has so many different steps in it, that it's very easy to lose your place. I, I'm just going to leave this here and assume that I got it right. I, because me trying to fix something after the fact, based on possible faulty memory, may not work. But that's going to put me, because NATO pulled a unit back, to here, I think, <laughs> uh, back on the Serbs, and now kind of feel like the Serbs are going to be playing for time because we have definite uh, inferiority in the air power. Unfortunately for us, or fortunately or whatever, I'm not sure that there's much that NATO can actually do either. Uh, now, the reason I say unfortunately, it means NATO's not going to expend their air power <laughs> in an attack. Uh, I'll look for something, but I wasn't seeing anything before. Things may have changed now, though, that I have the air superiority. It's kind of the question of do you want to play things out and hold on to your air superiority as long as you can, or do you want to actually try to make fights and try to use it multiple times. I chose the latter here, and we got another one of these crazy number setups. So in this case, five, two, five. <laughs> this was a B, this is an A. So that ends up being a five point difference in favor of NATO side which gives them a huge, huge die roll bonus there. Now, here I'm facing two to one and the city, oh, I forgot the plus one Sam fire, but it wouldn't have made a difference. Um, the city's loss ratio, I think the city doesn't affect loss ratio. So we're just at two to one. It certainly isn't marked as such here, but I know that there's a flaw in the thing, so I have to always look at the rule book because the TEC is apparently wrong, but I'm pretty sure in cities it's not. Pretty sure cities are right or in are in agreement. Yeah. Okay. And that means I have a 16 
There's no highway there. 16 to 3, which means I have a 13 bonus. NATO, 14 to 8 means a 6. So I do 3 points of damage to this and or this. Uh, sorry, to this and or one of, one of those. Uh, this one. Okay, so three loss points, and I'm all A's and B's, which means, I look here, I could flip to static for one, or, how many loss points did I say, three? Retreat two to three hexes. I don't know that I can retreat through here, though. Hmm. Got to look at the retreat rules again. You know, that's the kind of thing that usually is one of the few things you have to remember in, you know, your standard operational games. I'm finding this system really, really is not sticking in my brain at all. Uh, I'm having a harder time with it than I did with what are more complicated systems, honestly. Here's where it gets really screwed up. First of all, under the retreat rules, it doesn't talk about zones of control at all because uh, as seems to be the case with this designer, things are only stated once and no reference to where that would be reported otherwise. And that's part of it. You take away cross-referencing, you take away one of my ways of wiring in and out of things and um, seeing little hints that will stick in my head a little better. Uh, there have to be other things than that, though, that are causing this. Uh, although that's pretty damn bad. But over here under zones of control, an enemy zone of control force a friendly unit to stop moving or to immediately attempt a meeting engagement. Okay. A unit may retreat through an enemy zone of control if occupied by a friendly unit. It doesn't say it may not, if not, but that's the presumption if it's going to write it that way, I guess. Um, but that's weird. Because both of these units have to retreat if I take the retreat option that costs me two points. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be pretty damn hard to have it work otherwise. Uh, two to three hexes to avoid a two point retreat loss. So that would mean... If I retreat this one, if I can retreat this one first, I could go one, two, three. Now somewhere there's something about stacking in that, wasn't there? I think there was actually. But must not finish its retreat in an enemy zone of control. Otherwise it is routed. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to assume I can do this. One, two, three. Now this doesn't actually fatigue the unit, but I have to fatigue the unit as well for the third point. And this thing has to go. One, two, three. This does not get fatigued, I believe. Let me go back here and see how that's worded. And very odd. A defending unit may flip to static. Now, Here's where things get weird, again, in another way. Uh, if it's all units may retreat, all UQR A or B units, which again is poorly written, um, may retreat. Well, that seems to indicate that all the supporting units are involved in it, which leads me to think that maybe a supporting unit to the lead defending unit is allowed to do this or a supporting unit to the lead attacking unit. Again, this isn't nicely spelled out. Maybe it's included in these damn examples somewhere uh, in a way that better hints towards one of those answers. I don't fucking know. What is important though, is that I get a die roll on this. I get two movement points out of here, which allows me to go here but it's not enough to let me go any further. So, well, I actually, I could get to there. Yep, we'll press that extra hex. That's worth a victory point. 
swinging it over into there. And again, you know, I'm kind of like not sure whether or not I'm playing by the rules in all these cases. Uh, having to make so many checks, a lot of me is just saying, yeah, even though the system's interesting and everything, again, it doesn't feel like it's been developed enough. Uh, the rule book needs someone else to look at it and rewrite it, <laughs> which is a general problem I'm having with this, uh, this company, is just, it's just not coming out polished enough to express everything the way it should be. Now, I certainly play games that are that poorly written or worse. <laughs> that's, that's not the only issue, you know, here. And the, the other thing is this sort of nagging of, oh, wow, I really wish I was playing something that I was having fun with. Uh, especially with me, you know, kind of at odds, not really, you know, I'm not working or anything right now. This would be a time that I could, you know, put away and play a game in a day or two uh, that I'm really enjoying. Something this size could probably be done in that amount of time if I had the oomph to do it. Um, so what was the issue I was wondering about? Yeah, I wanna look at the combat example, see if that helps me at all in understanding what the hell is going on. But that's gonna move things back over here. Um, I assume we rolled our fighters and bombings and whatnot. Well, I remembered I saw, I looked at this before. So there's the regular combat example, which just kind of gets you to know who the victor is and what the combat differential is. And, you know, a lot of calculations and n numbers that go into it, and that's why this track is a pain in the ass to deal with. But for the absorbing LP in combat, they're just, they don't give anything about how retreats are actually handled or anything there. There's no example of retreats. So, yeah. Uh, you're kind of on your own to make that shit up. From what I can see. Yeah. Right then. <laughs> so I'll make up the rules as I go, as usual. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and I mean, you know... I, I move a piece or two, and this is like with Vietnam. I just don't want to do anymore. If the Serbs had any kind of air power, I would try to do something up here. I, I have a couple of hexes I could bring into play here. I got a number of Serbian units I could bring up there. I could actually drop the paratroopers in there and get a flanking attack and everything. But I just don't feel like I can do that when I'm sitting there with one G3, and these guys are sitting there with two G4s, yeah, damage, but, and an F4. So unless I can get NATO to expend that F, I got problems. Um, and I'm not, I haven't been able to open it up. You know, they could have lost it in, in the, uh, where they used it as, a, an, inter, as an escort but they're not seeming to be willing to make any attacks. On the other hand, again, the victory points are still in my favor, even though NATO gained another uh, city back. It is to attempt a uh, diversionary attack across here, and by sending my air support in, I rustle their fighter up. We'll do that quick roll here now. This fighter is at both plus and minus, or this gun uh, ship is at plus and minus one. Minus one for initiative, plus one for the die roll. So NATO's fighter does not get a hit, and I do not either. NATO's fighter gets a hit, and I do not, so I can't cancel that out. So my plane takes its loss point, and somewhere I have what loss points mean for error. I can simply abort for that, which is fine. Um, 
I'll roll the NATO fighter, see if it's coming back. That'll be a big deal. Uh, it is. <laughs> and this was damaged. Um, let me roll the SAM. This is at an A, so it's at plus one. I have hit it with a SAM. I believe that kills it. I think that doesn't just abort. The air unit is damaged, it's flipped and placed, or if already is eliminated, it was eliminated or victory points are adjusted. Okay, what's the victory point effect of a plane? I think it's one just like everything else. Okay, it's, there it is. One for each Russian or Serbia, two for each NATO air unit. Ooh. Well, that was a big hit. And that I'm going to put in the bag because... It can't come back into play. I don't want to confuse it with the ones I have on the way here. And now, we get to look at the lead units. That C is a 3, which is better than a B. Okay. And that A is a 7. 7 to 3 is 4 more. Uh... I didn't roll the bomber. I just killed it. Uh, no, it does four. One, two, three, four. Um, what that means is NATO is going to have a plus two. So I roll, and this is across the river, which does not for some reason affect casualties. Uh, I roll for the Serbs, and they get a six. Now I'm at plus two for NATO. They're at a four. I caused two. This was a set piece battle. That two has to be taken. I'm already flipped, so I don't think I'm allowed to flip again. Again, not spelled out like many things. Um, one would allow me to retreat a hex. This is not an A or B unit. Here's the question. Do I want to lose a victory point to keep the unit alive? And the answer is no, I do not. <laughs> so all I could do is retreat one hex because this unit sucks for one. And I think that would force all of these units back. Um, instead, I'll just kill the lead unit, I guess. And so the Serbs were actually successful with this set piece battle. And I get a an advanced die roll to check. Which gives me four movement points. So I could push all the way up to here. And I could bring one of my supporting units forward. Which is only this. Do I want to? If I don't do that, this gap can be filled. So I will fatigue them and move them forward as well. And we're getting closer to that automatic victory uh, from victory points. That's going to put things back on NATO's hands. And I've got these hopes that Serbia maybe will win this. <laughs> maybe in this turn. Uh, you know, it, it's not that far. Some of these units surrendering maybe at the beginning of next turn or whatever. Uh, this could be essentially over. Of course, that would mean playing out all of turn three. And I'm probably not going to get that many victory points off of this remaining turn. Especially since I have absolutely no air units left. And NATO does. But maybe NATO fucks up and makes an attack because now they have air power. Make an attack. I don't know if it's fucking up. Uh, they use their last surviving ground support plane, which means... Now the Serbs can attack, because they didn't get recharged, uh, as much as they like. They're, but they can't do an airborne without the danger of intervention, still. Which means this probably wasn't as, worth, as clever as I thought. And this unit could end up causing this to get uh, uh, cut off, and that could be a huge problem. Yeah, that's a U.S. unit. Uh, we got another weird, you know, 
This is a B, it's worth three. If it was a C, it would be worth four. Again, here like a B is worth four, but the C is worth five. It just, <laughs> randomness there. I think this is my total. NATO is at plus 10 essentially. And this is one to one uh, losses. So 13 to one, I'm gonna have to take a loss my first unit but I don't have to because yes I do because I'm, I, I'm assuming I can't retreat into an enemy zone of control even though it isn't explicitly excluded it's implied that it is um, although I don't know maybe I can because if all units retreat these are A or B units two to three hexes well it depends on how I do it right remember I order was important before well now, if I retreat this unit one hex, no, because nobody can get out into these hexes. All right, so this guy has to die. I thought I had a sneaky way. And that causes me an issue. Ugh. These, um, I'm having the same issue I had with an another game same publisher, same printer. Uh, that means I can do... This was the hex I advanced into? Yeah, this is the hex I could advance into. So if I advance in here, that cuts the supply off of this Serbian unit, which means if I can't reestablish that, we got problems at the end of the turn. That's gonna put things back on the Serbs. I have kind of an interesting idea. The Serbs are going to attack into here, but how do they want to do it is the question. If I do this as a mobile attack, I can increase my chances of winning the fight. <laughs> it fucks with the multiple, with the divisor though, in terms of casualties. Um, I think it's more important to win the fight than to deal with the casualties. So since I'm not flanking him and I don't get the bonus for the, for the flanking for a set piece battle, I'm going to actually launch into here and that is going to take up uh, five of my six movement points. I officially have one more movement point after I move into that hex. That's probably not going to be useful to me. But the key is to try to get supply out to here. This is my current modifier. I know already that this unit ugh, is only a 5A. Uh, there's no planes that can be involved. My A is a, four, is a 9, which will get me four more. One, two, three, four. And now I'm at seven to two. So the Serbs are at plus five. This is at two to one uh, loss ratio though. What did I say, plus five? So that's an eight and that's a three. So I did five losses. That means he has to take two losses. Well, the way two losses works out is he can flip to static. He's in supply, so he could give up a victory point to try to hold that hex. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, he's already static, so he can't flip to static. He could... What, what did I say? The difference? I don't remember what the fucking difference was anymore. Uh, I think it worked out to two casualties. I think that's what I said. I'm not going to go back and see. So two casualties against him could be a retreat. I guess you can do the victory point trade more than once, but I don't know. Because it's spend one would cause victory point to decrease. Is it limited? Is it not? Again, not spelled out, not spelled out here. Again, it doesn't tell you how you actually take the LPs, uh, but it may tell you one. Nope. Doesn't tell you how they spell them out in it. So, you know, yes, 
I hate looking at examples because the rules are unclear, but sometimes they do clarify the one special case you're looking for every now and then. Well, not here. It's that one paragraph that doesn't tell me a damn thing of any use. So, yeah, I don't know if I could spend two victory points to stay there. I'm assuming it's limited to one victory point. Uh, but, again, it's not clear. So I have two that I have to spend. The only thing I can do is to retreat. And I'm actually not allowed to retreat into an enemy zone of control. So I can fall back as far as there for three. That would allow this to advance into the hex. And this to say it's done. No. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That would allow this to advance into the hex. Remember, this is a mobile attack. I need that hex. I need that hex more than I need this hex. So, yep, I shift over. I keep my unit in supply. And that'll put it back to NATO to try to figure out a way out. And this is getting cut worse and worse each step. All the grousing I do, there is something really uh, exceptionally entertaining about what just happened here, right? Uh, I thought I had a U.S. attack that cut the Serbians off. They were able to counter it and break through in the same direction and connect up again. This is the kind of thing you don't usually see in most games. Um, certainly not in an I go, you go type situation. Hey, you kind of see it sometimes maybe in Hitler's war, which is I go, you go. But that creates these just enormously unbelievable situations. Whereas this creates a dramatic situation. One that is believable. One that could happen. That shows the ebb and flow. Uh, and it shows saving units as opposed to... Well, the problem with Hitler's war is that... Basically, it's like a game of Go in the sense of, not, not in the way it plays out, but in the sense that it, uh, um, it's like, well, one of us is entirely gone here <laughs> and all our pieces are dead. And we're not sure which one because you keep alternating back and forth. And because there's luck in that game as well as in this, you know, you roll it out. Here... NATO is not completely destroyed because of this. It's just they lost their opportunity. What ended up happening was they got to fall back. Uh, but, you know, it was a question of, well, is Serbia able to save their pieces? Which feels a lot more believable. Kind of reminds me there of an 18xx game in small numbers of people where you can pull, like, really crazy shit out of your ass. <laughs> um, just you know, by manipulating things. Interesting little puzzles with some luck factor or some uncertainty at least. In 18xx there isn't usually luck, but there's uncertainty as to exactly how it's gonna fall out because uh, the, ca the calculations are just too complex for, in my opinion, a human mind to be able to determine what, what is actually gonna happen. Some people seem to think that they can understand it. I see something weird. I think it's a gap between boxes. Okay. Anyway, you know, most of what you hear from me in this in almost any game is, hey, here's what's wrong or here's what's bothering me. And there's a lot that bothers me about this. Some of it that is fair and against the game. Some of it that is more about me as well as uh, Stuff that's really, really, again, the, the biggest complaint I have is really the rule book. Um, and I don't know if this kind of rule could be expressed in a cleaner and more effective fashion that would get into my brain. But I find it very, very difficult um, to absorb everything here. Other things have to do, and I've pointed this out, like we don't need the randomness that's involved in these if they're not going to keep their value, just increase the randomness on the dice and we'd have a better situation, to tell you the truth. Especially since these are really unpredictable. There's just too many counters that, like, 
a lower letter, a lower quality is better than a higher quality on that particular counter. And that just throws any kind of um, any kind of expectations out out the window for me. Um, but anyway, it is break time again. I'll come back, see what the Serbs can do. Uh, but this was kind of exciting, and I, I wanted to come out back up and point that out just because, yeah, I bitch a lot, <laughs> but that that was, you know, almost a... That was probably what this game is, is sort of at its best at. It, it gives you enough variability and everything that you can't be sure the attack's going to work or not when you <laughs> declare it. You have almost no certainty, and it's not like... It, it, it's hard to even assess what the odds are uh, because of all the jumbling and everything. But I would rather be able to have a little bit more assessment of what the odds are. Uh, but, you know, there, there was a chance I'd just get cut off there and, and slammed. And it, it, like with the XX situation the way that it kind of obfuscates how much, how good your units are and everything does actually serve some purpose. <laughs> it leaves you in even more uncertainty. Am I even making a reasonable attack here is kind of the question. The Serbs tried another one of these very aggressive pushes and they forced their way up to here, but then I paratrooped in. <laughs> with the French paratroopers. The only thing that I think I had that could get in there, again, cutting off a force, and now we're launching an attack here across the ridge line. That hasn't worked out well at all, including the massive B7 here versus an A6. Yeah, A4, B7, C4, I just, uh, they're all over the fucking place. I end up with a two-point deficit. I don't know if the ridge... So the ridge says one to one, one to one. Clear says one to one. Uh, I should actually be at two to one because this is a mobile attack. But I'm also behind the eight ball. So my attack is essentially at minus two. And that's not going to help. Minus one, that's going to be a six point advantage for for the NATO side. And I'm going to mark it like that. I think things are bad. Now, I can take just a casualty against this unit, knock it back into the routed unit's box uh, to try to make up for this hit. I still got another shot coming in with a B here, but I don't want to face this thing. So life is kind of troubled here. Um, here, although I've got three units around it, if I attacked here, I wouldn't get the flanking bonus. And I'd be attacking with a C against an A. On the other hand, <laughs> maybe that would work because, again, I've got no idea what these letters actually are going to turn up as. And trying to save a unit with the Russian unit might be worth it. Indeed, that Russian unit with a C on it ends up with a 6, whereas the A unit across from it has a 3. I forgot to... Put the two points there, but that gives me a one-point advantage there. I, it's just so unpredictable. I, I don't know what to say about the letters. So that's an eight to a one, which means I have a seven-point difference in my favor against that A unit. Um, I could spend a victory point again. I, uh, or everything that's adjacent to this is not A or B. This unit is not, so I think I'm not allowed to take the two point retreat because I've got some C units involved in the combat to some level or another. Uh, so that means. I could afford myself, I don't know, because I don't know if I'm halved. So my understanding is the ridge does not affect. There's no indication there. Uh, no, there's no indication there at all. 
And now over here, maybe this is the fucked up one. And I can I, I should just fucking use the TEC. Uh, doesn't appear to be any impact there either. I think it's the movement point. I know the movement point costs are wrong. So I've got seven points. This is a moving attack. So it's two to one. So I've got three hits on this unit. It could take, I guess, nope, the best I can do is one and one victory point. So this unit has to be destroyed the way I'm playing. Or routed, whatever that means. And that means that I can push forward into here. I've got another movement point left, but there's nothing I can do. But now I have saved the Serbian unit once again. And, you know, going after the A unit because the B drew a really strong number. I know I can't mess with that thing this turn. It'll be fine next turn. It'll be weak again, perhaps, or, you know, random as hell. But yeah, I mean, the fact that I got a, a better C unit. Now, there's already some balance fit in there. There was a two-point balance fit in there, so that... Uh, that three-point advantage I have was only a one-point advantage for attacking with the C unit. But, you know, I had other factors in my favor as well. Just craziness here. Uh, NATO is using its maybe last reasonable attack, a mobile attack here. Uh, I've got a C unit, one of these Croat units with a three strength, but the reason I went after it is because whatever this was, it's a B, it only has a two. Anyway, it ended up being a one point against me, but here comes NATO hoping for a good roll to make up even more ground. That's not gonna do it, that's a zero, so I'm at minus three, which I'll mark this way. Minus three, uh, this unit could flip, you know, I think only Defender can flip, right? Yeah, only Defending Unit could flip. So the best I can do is take one hit for a retreat, and that would retreat all of these units, which would cause me lots of problems. And then I would take a victory point, and I still wouldn't accumulate the three. If I could take two victory points, which again is indeterminate, it wouldn't, but this unit just died. So this combat system is turning out a lot bloodier than I feel like it should be. On the other hand, is there any chance in hell that I'd be willing to burn the kind of victory points that would be required? I, I don't think so. I mean, you know, victory points are really, really important and hard to cap to get. So far, there aren't very many cities in the game. Of course, this collection of dead units is liable to create some. Goes past at this point, which means I'm free to use my paratroopers if I want to. However, instead, I slid in to attack here. Paratroopers aren't really going to help me. They could have cut uh, supply lines though, and I still may do that. Um, but I'm launching an attack here. Now, this was a B, which goes from 10 to 3, then up to 6, against a bunch of threes, both random picks. That puts me at even here. And the Serbs get a plus six out of that due to the big die roll modifications. This is a two to one, so that's actually three hits. And again, these two units could retreat for two, and then I could get a victory point, but I can't retreat through here in any sense of the word. So this is dead. Um, I think Serbia's won the game. This moves into there, and now I've got additional movement uh, to make, and I believe I can just cut this off completely and kill that next turn as well. Uh, do I want to do any more? I don't know. I'm getting a lot of uh, effect off this. I probably do want to fill in these gaps here. Would an attack here be worthwhile? I don't know, maybe, but it's across a river that 
uh, adds one or two depending on where I look, right? I don't, I don't remember. I, I, I can never remember because some things are different, some aren't. Uh, yeah, that's plus two for combat on there and plus one over here as opposed to the ridges which are plus two for combat here and plus one over here. <laughs> uh, something got fucked up, I don't know which. Um, my guess is the rivers should be the plus two, I've said before, but it's hard to tell because mountains are plus two. Uh, but mountains also affect other things, which it seems like in either case, crossing the barrier, it's not gonna, it's not necessarily gonna harm the amount of damage you can do to the defender. Although you could certainly make an argument that way. What I think it would do is increase the damage you do to the attacker, which the game doesn't support at all. And again, I think there's some interesting system concepts here, but they just don't hold together as well as they should, um, in addition to whatever errors there are. And yeah. Um, so what the hell just happened? What am I looking at? I, I can't fucking remember what I'm doing. I'm trying to figure out my next move. Yeah. So my next move would be whether I want to hit this, where I'd have two support. Flanking would be worth another two. That looks pretty appealing, I guess. So let's go with that. I ended up in favor of NATO. Let's roll for Serbs. But I have another one I can follow up with if I didn't like that one. Six for the Serbs. One for NATO. That gives me five points for the Serbs. Um, it's a mobile attack with no highway. So I get a two hit on this. A two hit on that means it can go... Do, 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 do. I think it's already flipped. But I'm not sure. Yeah, it's already flipped. But it is a B, and the only adjacent unit's B, so I can retreat both of these units, or I could kill the unit. I'm going to retreat the two units and see what that causes. I made all those attempts. Because Serbian units are immune to having to check for a line of communication. They're, they're fine no matter where they are. They're like gods in this game, basically. <laughs> I don't know. But that air unit went in here. That's going to kill off these U.S. troops who do have to check. Um, and end up destroyed. I don't think anything else is destroyed. It's hard to tell again because blue and brown versus right versus red green grays kind of all kinds of different colors i, I just uh, <laughs> uh there's just too many different colors uh that end up there let's see the end here what else remove combat chits advance the game marker that's that's the rest of it but yeah, for the line, we basically have the Serbs made it to here. This is out of supply too. Bye. I don't know. I probably could have tried to save that. Yeah, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm just fucking sick of it. So there's some Brits who starve. I uh, didn't see them. This could have tried to get around there, but I don't think it has enough movement points to make an attack. Would be one, two, three, four. It would be attacking at major minuses, which probably would be worth it, but might end up costing me two units instead of one. And let's see. So the Serbian line comes up here, cuts down to there. And that's about it. Uh, kept a piece in Sarajevo because I must keep one, or uh, sorry, in Belgrade because I must keep one there all game long. Uh, kept my piece in Trieste, which, you know, 
I may not have needed to. I don't know where my uh, airborne Serbs are. They're probably flipped over. You can't see the type of unit once a unit's been used. So yeah, that'll push us into turn three after I clean up the counters and get them all unflipped. Again, a tedious process compared to using markers for used or whatever. I gotta swap batteries. Miss some of me flipping pages trying to find things here in the reinforcements and replacements. Uh, first NATO reroll. We got a five. That's going to be Italy. We got these. Yep. Bunch of crappy troops. Uh, we didn't make it into Italy, so we don't get the automatic Italy. This is. On a one or a two, the VO something or other comes in. No. And now recovery rolls, and this is where it's impressive. So we need, uh, well, we need ones to kill things. Serbian units that roll an eight may be placed in any Serbian city regardless of control. Yeah, well, we didn't have any of those. That's going to be kind of painful to recall if I roll it. Okay, so NATO needs sevens and not ones. And this is big because if I get an unreasonable number of ones, this could go down to zero. And, you know, I think I just surrender at that point. I, I kind of hope that's the case. All right, starting going across the line. There's one dead. There's another one dead. Oh. Down to the Croats. Hey, we get a unit. We'll put this over with our reinforcements. Get another unit. Nope. They don't need sevens. Over to the froggy. So we get a bunch of Croats, we lose two victory points, down to two. <laughs> now we go over to the Serbs, and on sixes, uh, they come back on, and they're limited where they go there, but it turns out if you roll, if you look on the recovery rolls, not over here where it's eligible to enter, it spells out that if you need an eight, down here, without any kind of note that that's a special role, they can go in any Serbian city. Uh, since none have been captured, that's not really a problem. Okay, we get one of the Serbs back. It would have been possible to neutralize the points. Okay, so now it's time to place the pieces, and I'll figure that all out. The Italians have that normal placement along the Adriatic, basically. I don't even think they're allowed to just place in Italy next to Trieste or anything. But I could stack them all there. Right? Yep. Got the initiative. Um, so they placed first. I think they placed a patrol first. But... And we got a suppression out of them for that. But we devoted everything else to suppression an airstrike, with the idea being, if we can hit Belgrade, we can get what may be an automatic victory by pulling uh, this air unit, because we can't dare you move this one, because the Russian air can then go in. Uh, I think that's the only air unit we have that could do this. Uh, we got a couple of them um, into here. Otherwise, since we put nothing in ground support, well, some of these may survive and make it through the ground support level. So, first, the interdiction fighting, hap uh, the suppression fighting happens. 
Now, there's more interdictions than there are, there, there's more interdiction fighters than there are support. Uh, I might have been better off putting things as patrols. I don't know. Um, but we have initiative, so we get an advantage on simple EC checks or whatever. So the first one succeeds, the second one succeeds. We take two of their fighters out of play. Ours get a recall check. One of them comes back. We'll throw that into the escort box now. I believe. <laughs> I believe it's done in that order. There's a suppression for the Serbs. There's fails. They get a recall or whatever, which fails. So they're spent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like NATO has lost. Uh, so they're taking a Hail Mary here. <laughs> um, which means that we go back to the next thing, which is strategic bombing. Nobody set any of that up. That's fine. This would be a way to try to equal those points out that, you know, we're losing all over the place, but that's okay. Um, an automatic victory is better, or the threat of an automatic victory forcing, you know, Serbia to do God knows what to try to get Belgrade back. Uh, they may have enough forces to do it. So what do we have next? We have our flight, which is going to be two patrols. And these airstrike counters are all going there. I will counter them with my both my interdiction, and we have two rounds of air combat. Now remember, these guys are in an advantage. So, how does air to air go again? It's, it's ECs, right? I kind of get to double up by doing suppression and then, uh, but only because this is a game winning move if it works. That's the only reason that uh, this is this way. So I look for the air rules in here somewhere. In two rounds, it's EC checks, yeah. Okay, so the allies need fives. I got one hit. That's gonna abort a plane. And these are two rolls at threes. Both hit. I can't afford to leave a Russian plane, uh, Serbian plane fighting me. So I am going to take an actual hit and spent. I believe that's how this works. Again, if I can find how planes take their hits in here somewhere. There we go. So two LPs, the air unit is damaged. Yeah. Which means I get to stay for the second round. I'm still a five. I get a hit. They're a three. They do not. They're knocked out. I'm going to try to recover my fighter. Putting him in the patrol box would be useful. He does not. Potentially. Like, you know, I can help support that. All right, now I've got an airstrike on Belgrade with three bombers. Well, how do airstrikes work? I hope they each get a dire haul, because otherwise I sent too much. But... He needed the overage in case the fighters uh, got through. So I select any number of G units. Do, 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 do. Then if any G remain in the flight, they each attempt an EC. If at least one is successful, uh, there's a single die roll. Yeah, okay. So I've got two fives and a six. The two fives, no hit. The six gets a hit, okay. I'll check for recovery. It's two fives. One of them recovers, one does not. And the six recovers. Okay. Oh, they don't. They look like French planes. Um, all right. 
and the same design though as this so i don't know um or close enough yeah yeah these are different these are mirages uh so this unit has been struck and this is where the real hey did i succeed happen on a one or two i route that unit and i think probably end up winning the game as nato It is just suppressed or activated, which means I probably lost the game. Given what was happening, though, I don't feel like I had a decent chance of coming back. I think this would just sit here all game. Uh, the air superiority was going against me. So what is the, after the air superiority situation, what is life like? And I didn't do any... Um, uh, knock a unit out uh, actions. The I don't remember what the hell they are, but like randomly fuck with something. We'll be hitting the action phase where Serbia has a bunch of ground support but no fighters, and NATO has ground support with no fighters. Uh, Serbia and Russia have a little bit more, and this is going to be another good turn for them, is all I have to say. And eventually, you know, two more of these are going to die. And I'm just going to keep playing that out with less and less excitement as I go. <laughs> so, uh, NATO fired off all the stacked units. And I think they have to do even before they can try to enroll for that. Whatever it is, the f randomness of war. But I, I don't remember what it's actually called, but it's where... You can fuck up a unit and uh, prevent it from operating. And the Serbs have been punching forward. Uh, all the ground support, I think there was one left for NATO. There were two uh, for Serbs. Well, the Serbs had theirs retired. I think the NATO one got crushed and sent into the dead bag. Brings the victory points down to one. We're at a point where basically... There's a drive-through opportunity to hit these things. Uh, it, it, it's over. It's a NATO turn. They're going to have to keep flinging unit after unit into place to try to prevent that last victory point from happening. I have really no capability for counterattacks. I did one counterattack. It worked well enough. Uh, it retreated, I believe, a Serb unit, but... This is just overwhelming, and we're, we're close to the edge there. So I think, given the scope of this, uh, I'm kind of of the mood that the result would be, I don't know, uh, either World War III <laughs> or Serbia uh, dominating Yugoslavia again entirely and basically creating its own country however it likes, under whatever conditions it likes. Um, how much Russia would be involved in this? Well, whatever comes out of Yugoslavia would be Russian-aligned. I don't really want to keep piddling away at this. I think the result is absolutely obvious. Do I need to get that last victory point? Well. If I, w once I do, I still need to play out the entirety of the turn. And as I'm waiting to, you know, I'm going to be constantly trying to peel off a unit. So these are all along the line. This can't go anywhere. It's already used. Which means I have a couple of these, but, you know, I still have airborne units with no fighter cover that could drop into these cities. Sure, Sam's can knock them out and whatever. It just strikes me that at this point, we are in a position where there's just no chance for NATO. And even if somehow NATO struggles its way out of this turn, they're going to lose another victory point here. And then, you know, they've got to like batter their way back up to a victory point so they don't auto lose. They're behind the eight ball the whole way. I'm going to call it here. Uh, this is pretty much a com complete collapse of NATO. Uh, that's without these VO units coming in, which is quite a large force, about equivalent to 
all the NATO reinforcements other than the air power. Uh, air power, well, you know, we were lacking two, two units, two German planes, I guess, which certainly would turn things a little bit. Uh, but with the amount of ground force that's just being allocated here uh, against them, they really have no chance. Um, there's a lot of variability in the game. Uh, each individual combat is incredibly random because of the combination of very random chits where your letter doesn't necessarily tell you what you think it does. Fairly random differential in the die rolls can happen. Um, the allocation of planes can cause issues to be a little weird. All the advantages are in Serbia's court, I, except for naval fire along the coast, which came into play once. Uh, I, do I see it possible that the Serbs could lose? Sure, there's enough variance in this that, yeah, there, there's no question it's possible. But I think things are heavily weighted um, in their favor. <laughs> like, at least by my reading of the rules. Now, there's enough ambiguities in these rules and enough things that maybe I'm getting completely wrong uh, because they're written in a certain way that is hard to decipher and yeah, I also make my mistakes, etc. But uh, I think the biggest thing that you could say is probably the best chance NATO has is just like a supreme run of luck. Did I get a supreme run of luck with the Serbs? I don't think so. And like I said, a lot of things are weighted in their favor. The initiative die roll is weighted in their favor. The um, air power is weighted in their favor to begin with, which seems insane to me. Uh, the quality of the troops. The Serbian army is at least as good as the US army. I find that hard to accept. Or about the same, yeah and better than most other NATO armies. The French are pretty decent. Uh, I just find this a very difficult to believe hypothetical. And if you're gonna make something this difficult to believe, you'd think you'd get the balance closer. I don't know. Um, I am completely handcuffed as to any idea of what could have been done uh, to save NATO's ass in this situation. Um, and it doesn't feel to me like Serbia got particularly lucky die rolls or anything. Uh, so unless I'm completely misreading this game, etc., cetera, I, I, I just don't know what to say about it. I'll come back with a review, I guess, because why the hell not? That's part of... The bargain, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad to be done with it. It it has some interesting points, and I'll, I'll touch on that in the review part. All right, let's send this sucker up.